The Blackout, based on When Charlie McButton Lost Power, by Suzanne Collins and Mike Lester. Little boy Kaysen had likes and like-nots. The things that he liked involved handsets and bots. Computerized games where he battled bad creatures. The things he liked not didn't have blow-up features. Then one day a thunderstorm blew into town and brought his tech empire tumbling down. A lightning bolt struck an electrical tower and little boy Kaysen, his whole world lost power. He looked left, he looked right, and his heart filled with dread. The TV, the lights, and his clock were all dead. He jumped to his feet, his lungs gasping for air. The room spun around and he clung to his chair. He tried to cry, help, but just managed to squeak. The blackout had blacked out his power to speak. Thank goodness his mother had ears like a bat. She came to his room and she gave him a pat. Oh, Kaysen, she said, picking up on his fears. The lights will come back when the bad weather clears. You'll have to find something without plugs to play. Read a book, clean your room, sing a song, model clay. Could anything be any duller than clay? Soggy gray clay on a soggy gray day? He hated the way clay got under his nails, and how he could only make snowmen and snails. He dove for a gadget he'd outgrown last spring. It was handheld, outdated, not much of a thing. But he clutched that old toy like a lifeline that day. See, it ran on one battery, the size AAA. He flicked the on-off switch to on double quick, but no happy humming sound followed the click. He unlatched a hatch and his blood turned to ice. The battery is gone from my backup device. World records were set in the 10 meter dash. As away down the hallway he flew like a flash, seeking one battery, just one AAA that would rescue one boy from a gray day of clay. But just when his search nearly drove him insane, he ran past the bedroom of his little brother Blaine. His three-year-old brother was something happily was doing, and the dino he held on his own it was moving. Now, dinos don't talk or walk on their own as a rule. They need a power source, some kind of fuel. In less than a second he'd made his decision, call it a bad judgment, a real lack of vision. He just couldn't take it. He had to have something more. So little boy Kaysen jumped on his brother's dinosaur. But alas, his plan was doomed to fail, for as soon as he took the toy, his brother began to wail. <coughs> it was just a short walk to the foot of the stair, where resided the family's time-out time chair. To add to the fun of his term in the seat, his brother Blaine came to play at his feet. And his little brother Blaine, the battery king, had more triple A's than little Kaysen had ever seen. They powered his puppies, they powered his clocks, they powered his talkative alphabet blocks, and assaulted by non-stop mechanical chatter. Little boy Kaysen got madder and madder, he snapped at his brother from his timeout time zone. How come you can't ever just leave me alone? His eyes filled with tears, and the little brother gave them a rub. He went to the bathroom and he hid in the tub. Then little boy Kaysen felt totally rotten. He couldn't help thinking of some things he'd forgotten. Mainly he thought that for little brothers that toddle, his brother Blaine was a pretty good model. He clearly adored him. He didn't have fleas. At dinner he'd secretly eat up his peas. And sometimes, although he'd most hotly deny it, he liked to just sit there beside him in quiet. He sat and he thought, and he stared at the rain. When his timeout was done, he went to find his little brother Blaine. From the edge of the tub, he gave him a peek. So, he said, hey, are we playing hide-and-go-seek? His little brother was happy at once and ran into the hall. As he loved playing hide-and-go-seek most of all, they took turns being it and counting to ten. They hid in the plants and the guinea pig pen. They piled up blankets and pillows and quilts and decided a big blanket fort should be built. Then the gloom made them think about dragons and spells. So Boy Kaysen became the great wizard McSmells, and as for his little brother who desired a roll, he was magically changed to his faithful old troll. Between tracking down dragons and brewing up lizards, and handling the day-to-day -day business of wizards, like forging his faithful old troll a new sword, 
Little boy Cason forgot to be bored. At supper they ate under real candlelight. The daytime had melted right into the night, and after they'd all been asleep for an hour, the world came alive with a big surge of power. <coughs> oh, it's finally back, little boy Cason thought with a grin. Tomorrow I'll wake up and I can plug in. But another thought hit him he couldn't explain. I might also play dragons with my little brother Blaine.